Welcome to the Oxen Group Nightly. My name is David Ristow. I'm the CEO, President, and Founder of the Oxen Group. We're a financial analysis and investment ideas firm. Um, and please check us out at www.theoxengroup.com. You can sign up for a free trial there for our website, learn about our um, investment ideas and long-term ratings, and also sign up for our mailing list. Well, today, the market had a pretty... Uh, I don't think it's actually an awful day. It was a it was not a great day in the market. Um, but we're going to start off today with the Monday market wrap up. We'll be looking at our position in Luluman Atletica, uh, L U L U. I do not think I'm pronouncing that right. It doesn't really matter when you're trading though. <laughs> we'll uh, also be looking at Netflix position that we got out today that was worth over four uh, percent. Some of our other current positions and other exits. Uh, we're going to be talking about our new vision for long-term ratings, which might be exciting for you um, to hear about some new developments that we're going to be having in that section of the website, as well as our forecast uh, for tomorrow. Um, so today, the market closed below 12,000 um, on a, a group of news articles you know, and news pieces that came out of J Japan um, that were pretty weak. First, you had the tsunami and the aftermath of that, which was a little bit, I think, more... Um, David sitting than people had originally f thought, and then that you know the earthquake and tsunami combination led to um, some problems at a nuclear facility in Japan. Um, I'm sure you've all heard about the story. The nuclear, uh, you know, they've had like a partial meltdown basically at this point, and um, led to some definite fear and weakness in the market today. But the thing that about it was is it's definitely going to be probably most likely short lived, given historical information on. Um, these sorts of incidents and how they affect the market, they tend to have a sort of one to two day lag, typically um, one day, and then you basically get, um, you know, the market kind of moves on from it. Um, and, and one of the positive notes on the day was that the volume was really light. We only had 7.4 billion shares traded, um, and we usually have about 8.4 billion traded um, on average. So this suggests that, you know, the selling may, was definitely weak. Um, not a lot of people were in the market today. And really that's because you have a combination of already pretty uh, weak market, you know, a lot of undervaluation, a lot of, a lot of stocks at support levels, a lot of stocks that uh, have moved back significantly, look pretty cheap right now. And then you had the combination of an, a weakening market. So a lot of traders, a lot of investors basically said, well, I'm not going to get into anything um, in this morning because uh, stocks are going to move down off fear, um, but they're already at pretty low levels. So um, you saw after lunchtime, we had a nice little rally um, after lunchtime, and which we'll get to that a little bit in a second here. Um, and then the, I think I thought the really nice story for the day was that you saw Berkshire Hathaway acquiring Librazol today for nine billion dollars in cash. And um, you know it's really a very very bullish sign when we see Warren Buffett ready to make an acquisition. It means he believes the market is completely back, ready to grow from these levels right here. Um, but the real the real rule uh, ruling story was that crisis in Japan. Here we got a few pictures here for you. Um, you can just see the destruction. And this is the the uh, nuclear facility um, that is sort of in has led to some of the the market turned down, um, but but you know the crisis in Japan is important. I mean, you have a number of sectors that are going to be heavily affected by it. You have nuclear was down on the day. Um, you then had um, alternative energies up because of that. Um, shipping is going to be a little bit weak. Some of the shippers that are connected to um, Japan will be weak. A lot of luxury good items are connected to Japan. Japan is one of the leading. Um, industries or sorry markets for um, luxury good industry and so that was also affected by that and then you also just have sort of the overall culmination of fear and crisis that always just leads to some weakness in the market but the thing about it was was we saw the market open lower and continue lower into lunchtime on you know a really big sell-off but then we saw a really nice rally at from the end of the day we filled basically the gap so we f we opened gap down 11 9 6 8 zero excuse me and we close right above that and so in reality we actually gained on the day from the open to the close and you know selling volume was really 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 weak at the beginning of the day and you saw a lot of, more volume picking up throughout the day as more buyers ready to re-enter the market a lot of stocks hitting just really really 
key support levels, low levels, and we were able to take advantage of that with a couple positions. We were get, able to get into Lula, Lula Lemon or Lululemon. I'm not sure which one it is, but they recommended entry. We recommended entry today at 76.85 this morning um, as the position had gotten an upgrade this morning from Think Equity uh, for a buy with an $84 price, $86 price target. And it moved down from that level with the general market. And once it hit this really key support level, which we'll show you in just a second on the graph, it looked like a terrific buy. And we actually were able to exit our first one-third of a 2% gain today um, before the close. And the reason we really like this stock is, as you can see right here, this is a key pivot point here between the Bollinger Bands. The stock's above both its moving averages, broke its moving average here, so we knew that it's most likely going to get a gap up here um, today, and it was the gap was helped all the way up to around the 80 level by that upgrade from Think Equity. But then the stock trailed down, and that pivot point you can see is at 77.79. And when the stock trailed below that pivot point, we saw that as a really good entry point, and we were able to get in a leak. A little bit below that at 76 85 um, and then the stock went back right all the way back up um, throughout the rest of the day and so we were able to get a nice two percent gain but you can see that the upside here this gap right here is significant and there's a lot of room up here to its upper Bollinger Band so the stock has a lot of potential. RSI at 55.68, which is a little bit overvalued, but definitely for this stock, you can see it's been above 50 for most of the last three months. So there is definitely the thought that it will continue to increase. And yeah, we really like where the stock is. We think it's got some great potential. Um, we also got an um, extra last um, third of our position in Netflix. Um, we were able to exit this final position today at a, for a uh, over a 5% gain, um, and we were able to exit for averaged out for a 4% gain overall on the stock, actually 3.87% to be exact. And um, we bought back here at 195.33 on Thursday, and we were able to exit as it went up. The th reason why we exited today was because this stock looks like it's going to have some resistance for quite some time here on the uh, 20 day estimated moving average, or actually the exponential moving average. If it can break that, then the stock definitely has a lot of upside. But we thought, you know, we had 4% gain. Um, it could take a, a little bit of time to break through that exponential moving average without a big catalyst, um, maybe a couple days. And that money that we could take off the table could then be used to reinvest in something that might move a little more quickly. Um, other than that, we also exited half of our app position for 1% gain, and we're definitely looking for more with the iPad 2 news. Um, on a strong day, um, Apple could definitely have another 2 to 3% on the upside on that. Um, Bank of America we got into that last week at the end of the week, and um, seeing neutral on that showed some weakness in the early part of the day with the general market pullback, but had a really nice rally into the close, and we're back to neutral on that one. We're looking for more. We were able to make a small gain this morning on a TAN ETF. That's the solar Guggenheim Solar ETF. Um, we made a quick scalp for about half percent on that. We did take a small loss at about a 1.25 percent. Um, in a short sale, we attempted an NRG Energy this morning. Um, they have a, a, a pretty significant nuclear um, division of their company, and we thought we might be able to get a little bit of a downside on the stock. But uh, actually, the stock gapped down and then rallied up throughout the rest of the day. Um, and so it ended up, we ended up just taking a small loss as we saw that that one was not going to go our way. Um, and the Infinera position we've been holding on to gained a nice 2% on the day, um, really bucked a trend of the market, which shows some strength. That we're hoping that we can finally get out of this one here, hopefully this week, as the stock moved very close to our exit last week before showing a little bit of a pullback, some profit taking, but retesting the lows and now bouncing off them and moving higher. We're hoping can retest newer highs. Um, so we have a new vision for long-term ratings. Um, for the longest time, we've been doing company-specific long-term ratings, you know, uh, fair value estimates on DCF analysis um, for different companies in different sectors. And we're actually going to start a whole new equity research portion of our company, um, which is going to not only use fair value estimates, but we're also going to be doing industry and sector-wide um, scoring systems for value, growth, profitability, management, and financial health. Um, we're going to use those scores to create some really neat indexes, create some um, neat um, sort of portfolios that we would put forward for different types of investors, value investors, growth investors, momentum investors, um, people that are looking to invest in you know really strong management 
groups and, and things like that. And we're going to be able to do that for different sectors and uh, we'll be able to do it for, you know, a spe sector specific um, sort of scoring system. And then also for, for the, you know, industry wide scoring system and then throughout the whole market scoring system. So we're going to be able to combine a lot of data. We're doing a lot of this data right now um, to put that together. And the first sector that we're going to, that we're going to put forward is the solar sector. So that's one of our uh, favorite things to cover. And we'll be able to uh, present some interesting analysis on the solar sector since we cover three companies right now. But we're going to be looking at about 15 to 20 companies overall that will fit into this new vision that we're having. Um, we haven't named it yet or anything like that. And it, it's definitely in the, the seed phase, but um, we're definitely developing it as we speak. Uh, for tomorrow, we've talked about this a little bit, but we do think that we saw some pretty good bullish signs today. We had low volume selling off, so and we had a late rally trying to break back over 12,000. Um, and I think the key to tomorrow will be um, how does the market react to what we saw at the end of the day. And then we have definitely do have some interesting um, earnings um, coming out from Williams Sonoma and a couple retail companies. They're smaller. Um, it could help out a little bit, but the key to tomorrow will definitely be the Empire Manufacturing Index. Um, we had the NA, NAHB Housing Market Index. We got the Export Import Prices. We got a couple other smaller um, economic data points, and some of those can come out positive, especially the Empire Manufacturing Index. If that can really come out positive, that can really help bring just a nice catalyst to the market. And I think that we also want to hopefully see some recovery in some of the Asian markets besides the Japanese market. You know, hopefully the the Shanghai market, maybe the Sensex. Um, and some of the European markets can show some, show some strength to help lead the way. And I think that will help sort of help our, the American market um, follow in those footsteps. I do think that the that, that low volume though really is bullish and shows that you know that the downside may be, may be limited um, and may be done um, for now. Uh, well, that's going to wrap us up for today. Please visit us at www.theoxygroup.com. Email us at contact at theoxygroup.com. Call us at 1-800-709-1160. We hope you'll please be a part of 70% plus accuracy.